Hello guys, this is the Pika from MyTutorialRack.com. In this particular tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about the field permissions. So these are the list of the fields that are associated with the account object and like account name, account number, and I have opened one particular record, which is the Burlington Textile Corp of America. This is the account record. And you can see these are the different values for the particular field here. So read access means that you're able to access that particular, uh, you're able to view that particular field. And edit access means not only you will be able to read the particular field value, but you will also will be able to edit it. So these are the different field permissions. And we're going to go ahead and talk about more in detail in the upcoming tutorials about these field permissions. So going back to what we can do through the under system admin, you go ahead and click on this particular profile overview and it will take you to this uh, profile enhanced look and feel. So just go ahead and click here. And uh, we have already gone through the tour. We have done this one. We have discussed about the edit properties. Then we have discussed the sign user part. And now we have discussed these are the different different if you wanted to have Apex class access. Um, to allow which particular Apex class to be executable, then you can go ahead and control that. Visual Force page access, you can go ahead and do through external data source access means if you have an external system uh, or a third party system that you want to interact with or it is out of the scope of the Salesforce org, then you can give that control the access through this one. Then you have custom permissions, etc. Then you have, these are more of the user level permissions like what object settings, what account, what fields, etc. Then you have the system permissions. Now system permissions are going to be applicable to all the user across the app. So system permissions is the permissions to perform actions that apply across apps. So no so these are which is going to control not only specific user but they're going to go ahead and control everything across the app. So for example modify all data. So what does this particular permission say? Even if you have if you have this modify all data, no matter what other restrictions you have, you will still will be able to um, edit and modify the data as long as you have modify all data permission. So that is the system permission, which is going to be taken, takes precedence over everything else. So let's go ahead and click on the system permission. You can open it in a new window, a new tab. And so this is what the system permissions looks like. And if you wanted to go ahead, assign topics, etc., you can do through these. Sometimes the questions might come from this uh, particular uh, topic as well. These are the system permissions. So let's say you wanted to go ahead and allow the access of dashboard folders or create report folders. Sometimes your developers want to have their own report folders where they can put reports reference to their team, etc. They wanted to have wanted to create a separate dashboard folder. So through this, you will going to go ahead and uh, give them the access through these are the system level permissions. So you can give them create dashboard folders. Then they will be able to create their own folders. Uh, this will come into uh, practice when we are talking about the reports and dashboard section. If they have given the delete topics permission, then they will be able to de delete the topics and remove all the corresponding topic assignments from the feed items. So they will be able to do that. If you want to have edit HTML templates. So Salesforce has give, created some standard templates. And if you have given this permission, then they will be able to edit those templates. So most of these things are checked for a system admin because we can control mostly everything. And if you wanted to edit the tasks, edit topics, etc., you can go ahead and do that through the, this particular system level permission. And then you have these are the different modify all data. So what does that mean is it will be able to create, edit and delete or organization data regardless of any setting. So no matter what kind of sharing settings you have, if you have modified all data, you're going to be able to modify anything, any particular data. Then and then we have this. Uh, so if you go ahead, run reports, if you wanted to run and schedule reports, view all data, view all data means it's going to view all organization data regardless of sharing settings. So no matter what kind of sharing setting you have, even you do not have access to read a particular record since still since you have view all data, it is going to go ahead and override all that setting for you. Then you have the user permission. So what is the user permissions? The user permissions is going to be um, like if you wanted to assign permission set to a particular user, you can do that. 
if you wanted to go ahead and manage internal users, if you wanted to manage IP addresses, it means you wanted to create, edit, and delete which IP ranges it has to be. The user has to log in access policies. All these things you can go ahead and you have the permission. Most of system admin has all these things and they work around these stuff. If you want to view all users, you can do that. So these are the user's permission. If you wanted to assign permission set, view all user, etc. So these are the system permissions. So if the question might come through what you change your system permission, that if you wanted to go ahead and uh, give create and uh, create access uh, for the report folder and create access for the dashboard folder, then you're going to go through the profiles. So another thing to note here, if you scroll down on this, we have login hours. So what do you mean by login hours? Login hours means what time do you want somebody to log in? Like if you wanted to disable the login access on Saturdays and Sundays, you can go ahead and do that. If you wanted to go ahead and prevent getting into Salesforce on a um, Christmas or New Year time, you can go ahead and do that. So by this, you're going to go ahead and uh, say, okay, my start time, you can work only, you can't work on uh, Sundays and Mondays. You can go ahead and give that particular time frame through which time you're not allowed and uh, from Monday uh, let's say you wanted to say 8 to 5 p.m. you wanted to go ahead and only give them the access that time then you can go ahead and change those login hours I'm not going to change it because I, I'm going to use it throughout the day and the next thing these are the login hours you can control and then you have under the system we have uh, IP ranges so this is the particular range of IP addresses that um, you want to do. If somebody is trying to hack into the system from a different, so this is going to go ahead and stop it. So here you can say uh, my company network starts from 192.168.1.10 to this particular, it ends at 1.20. Then only those computers which have those IP addresses will be able to access this and the rest will not be able to do. So you will be able to add those IP ranges through this particular portion. Then you have the session settings. Now, the session settings is, let's say, you have been working on um, Salesforce and then you went for lunch or something and you wanted to lock out or the, there's no uh, action going on on the screen. Then there is saying that the session will time out after two hours of inactivity. So if I leave this still and it's been two hours and I haven't done anything on the screen, then what will happen is it will log me out. And if you wanted to increase that time span, you can go ahead and say to, okay, eight hours if there is an activity, then go ahead and session times out. Do not do it before that. Or um, if you wanted to just do it after 15 minutes, then if there is an inactivity for 15 minutes, it's going to go ahead and lock you out or session timeout will be there. And uh, so these are the things you can go ahead and change through the uh, session settings, usually depending upon what kind of work they do. The call center people usually will have like 15 minutes so that if some no one tried to do something uh, fancy or no, no one try to hack into your system so you will try to go ahead and uh, session out as soon as there is an inactivity for 15 minutes uh, so depending on that you can go ahead and change the inactivity for everyone so if you go ahead and say four hours then you can go ahead and say and if there is a four hours in inactivity then go ahead and time out so i'm not going to change i'll leave it as to two hours and then i'm going to go ahead and save it so this is the session timeout thing and the next thing you can do through the profiles is if you scroll down, the next thing you have is the password policies. Let's say when you want the password uh, to be changed or you wanted to see what characters to be there and how many characters, how many digits, etc. What should be the length of the password? All those things you can control through the password policies. So user password expired in 90 days. So what happens is if somebody hasn't changed the password for 90 days, that particular password will expire and then you have to go ahead and create a new password. So this is controls that for 90 days, you want to change to one year. It's easy to do it after like 30 or 60 days so that if somebody tries to get your password, they're no longer valid. Uh, those passwords, if you keep on changing it and force password history, like if you change passwords, and you wanted to remember last three passwords so they do not repeat it or last two passwords so those you can control through here minimum password length is basically um, 5 to 50 characters the password length should be between 5 to 50 so it should be either um, and it should not be less than five characters and it should not be more than 50 characters so you can go ahead and specify that length here let's say i wanted to change it to 15 so minimum should be that i want to change it to 10 the minimum should be that or if i wanted to change it to five i can do that
password complexity requirement. So you wanted to have an alphanumeric uh, password, means you have wanted to have digits as well as uh, alphabetics, um, then A to Z, then you can go ahead and specify that. If you wanted to have special characters also, you can do it. If you don't want any restriction, wanted to have a simple password, password, then that's also fine. You can go ahead and control that. Generally, people wanted to have you at least alpha and numeric characters. Uh, password question requirement, you see that if you forget password, then um, you might want to have the security question along with it. So you can go ahead and do that as well. Invalid login attempts. If somebody is trying to log in and you have been 10 times unsuccessful, then it's going to go ahead and lock you out. And then you have to go through the system admin to unlock you. You can decrease that number to three or five, whichever you want. So if you have five unsuccessful login attempts, it's going to go ahead and lock you out. Lockout effective periods, so you can change it to 30 seconds, 60 minutes, or forever. And the obscure secret answer for password resets. If you want to do, if you're doing a password reset, you need to go ahead and answer some questions. If you want to do that, require a minimum one day password lifetime. So if you have changed the password and you wanted to change again, you need to wait at least a day to before doing that. So these are some of the things that you can do through the profiles. So let me give you a quick overview. We started with the standard profile uh, layout where we changed those through the uh, user interface and we changed it to the enhanced section. And now we have a start, uh, we started the tour here where we start if you wanted to change the object setting or a field permissions for a particular object, you can go ahead and do that. If I wanted to go ahead and change the account, you can click here. If you wanted to change the settings for the leads, you can go ahead and change it here. And if you wanted to clone this particular uh, profile, means you wanted to create a copy of this, you can just click on the clone and then you need to give the name for the new profile. If you wanted to add some description or anything like that, you can go ahead and provide it under the edit property section here. And then which all users have the system admin profile that is defined under the assigned user section. So since it's not a custom profile, so this particular checkbox is not checked. Then you have assigned apps, means which all apps that you're able to visible, those are controlled through here. If you wanted to go ahead and change those apps, you can go ahead and change it through this. You can make them visible, you can hide them, etc. If you wanted to go ahead and change the connected app visibility, then you can go ahead and through, see through them here. You can say, okay, these are the apps that are connected apps that are visible. These are the apps that are, are not visible. Object settings, if you wanted to control the objects and the fields, the read access on the object, edit access, we'll talk about those in the upcoming tutorials, the layout, etc. Those you can do through the object settings. Then you have app permissions, uh, like app specific actions, like manage call centers, etc. Those you can do. Uh, class access, these are the things. Uh, Apex class access, if you wanted to give access to execute Apex classes control the access on the visual force pages, etc. And then you have the uh, system permissions, like um, if you wanted to go ahead and uh, perform actions that apply across apps, then you're going to go ahead and use system permissions. In the system permissions, you control who have access to uh, create specific folders, who have access to do assigned topics, you have access to do um, Apex, uh, create Apex classes and triggers, all these things. And I'm not able to edit those because uh, I'm a system admin. And I have to do these things. So they have given me access on all these things. I can create report folders. I can create dashboard folders, etc. And then we talked about the uh, desktop client access is basically permissions to access desktop clients like Connect for Office, uh, login hours. If you wanted to specify which hours the person can log into the system and you wanted to restrict holidays and you don't want people to work on weekends, then you can go ahead and restrict that as well. If you have specific IP ranges you only want to apply, then you can go ahead and control those IP addresses here. And session settings, if you wanted to specify timeouts for the session, what time, if, if there's an inactivity for a specific time you wanted to time out, then you can do through these. What are the password policies? Does it need to be alphanumeric? How many characters to be there, etc. So all those things you can go ahead and control through the profile. So right now we are under the system admin profile and next tutorial we might take a look at a sim simple standard user profile and see what, what kind of permission a standard user has. So we'll talk about those in the next tutorial. Thank you.